Hey everyone, what's up? So Google recently open sourced their internal Python based rapid app development framework called Miso. Now, whether you are a seasoned developer or you're somebody who is just getting started with Python, this tool promises to make web development simpler and scalable. I played around with this tool for a bit. So let's see what Miso has to offer and how it stacks up against other frameworks like Streamlit. So Mesoop is this open source UI development framework that allows you to build web applications in Python. You do not need to know or write any HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You can write your UI in idiomatic Python code. Now, this sort of functionality is also offered by other frameworks like Streamlit and Great.io. The thing that makes this stand apart is the component-based architecture. So your entire UI is composed of these reusable self-contained blocks of code. So this approach basically is inspired from front-end frameworks like React. So they're saying that they have this hot reload feature, which preserves the state and will automatically reload the browser. Rich IDE support for strong type safety, and you can build custom UIs without writing any JavaScript CSS, as we have seen already. So this is available to us as a Python library. So all we need to do is pip install Mesop and uh, you write your code and run your application. We can also try this out in Cola. So why would anybody start building with Mesop? We have UI frameworks like Streamlit and Grid.io, which are very easy to get started with. You can build applications, showcase your demos very, very easily. Now, folks at Google, they already know this. But they are saying that as soon as it comes to customizing beyond the defaults, that's when you start thinking about adding HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, having a complete front end for your application. And that's where Mesop comes into the picture. They are saying that it's easy to learn and enables flexible UI building. Let's see how. So I can start building the UI with function. They embrace the component-based philosophy and each function is going to serve as a component. If you go over the getting started guide, they've given all the steps, pip install Mesop, and uh, all the other steps are fairly straightforward. You can follow the instructions and start your first application. So I looked at a few examples and started setting this up in my Colab notebook. First of all, install the Mesop library. So pip install Mesop. This will install the package for you. Then import the Mesop package and then they have something called as labs. Now these labs have a few components that you can customize and build on top of. So they also offer a bunch of uh, components and this is still, you know, a nascent library. So they'll keep adding more and more components. Right now, as uh, I've seen, there are only two to three components available in labs. And finally, I have this me.colab underscore run. So this function is specifically to run your Mesop application within the Colab environment. So as soon as I run this, you'll see that it'll start a server localhost uh, at port 32123. And one interesting thing is it's based on Flask framework. So this is actually a Flask application underneath. Now, let's look at the Hello World example, fairly straightforward. Okay. They're saying that you can build UIs with Python. And what do they mean by that? First of all, I have this function decorator over here. Every Mesop application is going to start off with import Mesop as ME. Okay, that's the only recommended way that they're saying uh, to start building your Mesop application. Then at the rate me dot page, this command, this is a function decorator over here, which makes this function hello world, the root component for a particular path. The path over here is hello world. So all I'll have to do is localhost port 32123 slash hello underscore world. That's where this function will be triggered. This function will come into picture. Okay. So if you omit, if you do not add anything, so that's basically the root path. Okay. Now the hello underscore world function that I have, this function is going to be called a component because it is creating a Mesop component in your body of the web application. And finally, once you run this, this is me.text. This is just a text component that we are using, which is going to display this hello underscore world, which is hello world, which is written inside. Now me.collab underscore show. 
this is the function which will display what is written at this particular path for my application. So collab show is another function to when you are running your application within your collab environment. So hello world height is equal to 100. So they provide many such parameters that you can tweak in order to stylize your entire application. Another example, simple chat. So I provided function decorator, created a component chat. Okay. And this time I'm using this MESOP labs component. So MEL dot chat. So they have this chat component that they offer. So if you look at, if you go to labs over here, MESOP, Inside MESOP, they have a bunch of labs that they offer. So go to labs. So right now they have chat.py, text to image and text to text. So these are three components that you can start using, but they'll keep adding more uh, is what they've promised. Okay, simple chat. This is my URL, the route, the component. I'm using mel.chat and inside this, I've passed a function. What is that function? It takes a prompt and it takes the history. So this is list of messages over here. And what it's going to do is it's going to return hello and it'll it's going to give us back our prompt. So there's no LLM involved here. I have simply just displayed, returned hello and the prompt that I've entered. That is going to come back to me. So if you see, this will open up a chat interface for us. Okay, so if I'm going to say I am Harshit, so it's going to say hello, I am Harshit. So yeah, there you go. Hello, I am Harshit. So this is the chat interface that MESOP has offered to us. Okay, another type of example. Now this is where MESOP actually shines, according to me. So MESOP is really good at state management and they provide this decorator state class. So I've defined my class state, which is going to track the clicks. So clicks is just an attribute within my state class, which is going to be of type integer. Then I've defined a function button click and it's going to handle me dot click event. So this is the click event handler that MESOP has. So it's going to track all of those events. And finally, state is going to be updated using me dot state over here and of the class state. So state object is passed to this me dot state. And finally, once I have that object ready, the state object ready, I'm going to keep incrementing as soon as an event of a click is triggered. And finally, I have my main component at this route slash counter main function me dot state. So first of all, create your state object, then me dot text. This is the text. So clicks, it is going to show the number of clicks. So this is the variable state dot clicks. This is my attribute, which they are displaying using formatted strings. And finally, the button to click. So this button says increment, I can add this button component, okay, uh, increment and on click button click. Okay, so on click is another parameter within my button widget over here, run this collab show slash counter. This will again, give us a simple interface. I have this increment button, you can again, you know, there are multiple style parameters, etc, that you can play around with. So if I click on it, click one, two, three. So it is really good at managing states. Now you must be wondering what are the other types of components that MESOP offers. So if you go to components tab on top, these are all the components that MESOP offers. And it's pretty close to, you know, how Streamlit is structured as well. So high level chat, if you see, this is the chat component that they have. And this is the entire code. So you can just quickly copy paste and you know, start building on top of it. So you can create any LLM application using this, a simple chat interface. Then they have this layout box. So these kinds of UI elements, along with all the style parameters that you can tweak. H1, H2, Markdown, they have some Markdown capability using this Markdown component. If you have code in your application, they have this code component as well. Further slider, button, checkbox, text area, all of these are available for you to use. So if you're somebody who is trying to learn MESOP 
and uh, who are trying to start building with Meshop, I would suggest that you go to the Getting Started Guide, install, go through the Quick Start. Here they have broken down the explanation of what each text, each decorator, each component, you know, each element in your code block actually means. And then you go to the guides section. These are all the important elements that you should know before you start building something. Now from components to state management, interactivity, how to add multiple pages, deployment also. So you can deploy on Google Cloud or AWS or any cloud service provider. So web security, labs, etc. All these resources are provided, but keep in mind that this is still very new. They've just open sourced this and they're building this, uh, you know, as we're moving ahead. So they will keep on adding more and more functionality into this. For examples, the best place to look at is the demo gallery. Now, this is a Mesop application itself. Okay, they've built this on Mesop all. So there are a bunch of use cases that they have created for you to play around with. So based on your use case, you can quickly open up any application from here. This is the markdown editor. So new note. Okay. If I start writing, for example, this is uh, heading two. So this will start showcasing heading two over here. And this is the code that you can use. So I also started playing around with one of my applications. And so I also wanted to build something using Mesop. So I picked up one of their samples from their demo gallery and uh, I hooked it up with my Olama library. This is the Llama 3 model that I want to test it out with. So the way to run this over here is uh, Mesop app underscore Mesop. This is my this is my Python application. And uh, here, if I click on this, this is given us an error. Okay, so you can see that accessed path not registered. It's not registered because my root component over here my root component over here says slash LLM underscore playground. So after this, I'll add slash LLM underscore playground. And this is my application. From here, I can choose whichever model I want to pick. Okay, this is the region, temperature, etc. So for Llama 3, all of these uh, will not make sense over here. I can just simply select the model and uh, play around with uh, my Llama 3 model, which is running locally, which is the uh, best ramen, let's say. Okay. I hit submit. Now, as soon as I hit submit, so Llama 3 would kick in and it should provide a response under my response tab. And all of this, so if you see how my response is being sent to me, I have this tab box component, which is rendering my markdown. So here you see age old question and the Llama 3 response is rendered over here. So this is the kind of interface that you can build, but again, it took me, you know, decent amount of time to build something like this. Whereas with Streamlit, it would have been much, much faster. And I personally feel that there is a steeper curve when it comes to learning Mesop as compared to Streamlit. So how does Mesop compare to other frameworks like Streamlit? So Streamlit is fantastic if you have a quick prototype to build. Okay, data applications, Streamlit does really, really well. But Streamlit also has some limitations when it comes to detailed customization, handling complex UI logic and, uh, you know, state management. Mesop, on the other hand, offers greater flexibility and uh, it's more scalable. So if I put them head to head, Streamlit is good for rapid prototyping, data visualization, data applications, whereas Mesop is for complex, uh, scalable web application, which require advanced state management or high, you know, customization. When it comes to suitability, okay, Streamlit is extremely easy to set up and use with, you know, a shallow learning curve, whereas Mesop is for maybe I would say kind of like enterprise application if you have to display your demo in front of VCs or investors or, you know, uh, higher management uh, where a lot of uh, your components should work uh, with the states maintained along with detailed UI customizations. Then when it comes to learning curve, obviously Streamlit has, uh, Streamlit is fairly simple. You can get started with it very, very easily. And with Mesop, you'll have to spend time to see, you know, how things are working. But once you get the hang of it, then it'll be easier. 
but it offers more flexibility and customization. So performance would probably be better as compared to Streamlit. So to wrap up, I would say Mesop is a powerful tool for developers who are trying to build web applications in Python. And uh, it'll be very beneficial if you have a complex application to build where you have, uh, you know, customizations to do. You have to add uh, UI elements that would not be very easy to get up and running using something like Streamlit. But if you have simple use case, you know, I would say 70 to 80 percent of the use cases uh, are fairly simple, which I can build using Streamlit. So most of my applications, most of my demos are still going to be on Streamlit. But for those 10, 20 percent of complex use cases where I have states to manage, where I have uh, custom UI elements to add to my application, I would go with Miso. All right, that was all. I hope you liked the video. You found it insightful. And if you want to see more of uh, such videos, please comment down below. I'll create uh, more such product oriented, uh, you know, tool oriented videos for you. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that bell icon if you want to stay updated on uh, the next uh, videos. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep learning and keep building.